So in Vanguard you need to earn a lot of close range kills for getting gold, diamond and atomic weapon camos. So in this video I'm going to give you guys the best maps and game modes, the best class setup for this and then the best tips and strategies for getting point blank medals really fast. If you want to check out any of the camo challenge guides like headshots, long shots, bloodthirsty medals, gold gun guides, how to level up your weapon fast, anything like that. I'll have cards for those videos on screen and a link in the description so feel free to check them out. I'll also have timestamps in the description too if you want to jump to a specific part of the video, although I do recommend you stick around until the end so you don't miss out on any important tips and you can get the challenge done as fast as possible. Without further ado though, let's get into the tips. So a few days ago the challenge used to be requiring you to get point blank kills for the Berserker camo challenges in order to unlock gold, diamond and atomic camos and obviously the point blank kill would count when you see the point blank medal pop up on screen. Now point blank medal is when you get a kill when you're a very close distance away from the enemy, probably about 1-2 to two meters away, something like that, max distance, so you have to be almost touching the enemy me with your weapon for it to count. But since a few days ago Sledgehammer Games have actually changed this challenge, presumably because people struggle too much, I'm not sure. I didn't think it was that difficult but obviously enough people probably did. So now the Berserker camera challenges just require you to get close range kills instead of point blank kills. 100 of them to be precise. So basically for the Berserker camera challenge in Vanguard you need to get 100 close range kills with your weapon to get the gold, diamond and atomic camos by completing this Berserker camera challenge. Now as I'm sure you guys will expect, a close range kill is much more forgiving giving than a point blank kill. I don't know the specific distance with how forgiving it is but I would imagine you could probably be standing at least 10 to 15 meters away or more from the enemy and it will still count absolutely fine and you'll see some gameplay I'll show you here of what counted so I'll show you there's a couple of kills I quickly just tested it you jumped into a match got three kills and backed out and you can see that some of these were actually further away than you'd think you know they're nowhere near a point blank range and yet they still counted for these close range kills so obviously it's a lot more forgiving this challenge than the previous point blanks whereas before you probably had to be like say about two meters is maximum away from the enemy or less for it to count. So this challenge is obviously a lot easier than before but we'll still go over the best maps, game modes, class setup and tips to make the challenge even easier to complete. Now the distance tolerated for, for the challenge may be reduced in the future as it seems quite easy right now. They may keep it as it is, they may make it harder, they may make it easier, I don't know. But obviously just be aware that it may change and if it does obviously you've just got to adjust your playstyle and these tips to help you with that. But just as a quick note, getting a point blank kill will still count obviously towards the close range kills because it's obviously probably about 10 to 15 meters most but obviously you can be close than that so don't think you can't get point blank kills you still can but because they're a lot harder to get you don't want to necessarily go for them every time whereas close range kills are absolutely fine and they count so you don't have to be basically touching the enemy whereas before with the point blank kills you did if you get a point blank kill you'll know that definitely definitely counted whereas obviously it's a little bit more ambiguous when you're further away because there's no specific medal that tells you whether you were close enough or not until you actually finish the match and check the camera challenges but obviously you'll get a feel for what counts and what doesn't after the first game or so but now let's move on to the best maps and game modes and then we'll move on to the class setup and then some other tips so the best modes at the moment in the game you want core modes as you have more health so you can get closer to enemies without getting shot easily so some good modes would be ones like domination free for all tdm kill confirmed and patrol and hardpoint as well those kind of ones in the normal way i would just say you know keep playing free for all only as this gives you the most enemies on the map for a greater chance of getting close to people but at the moment das house 24 7 is currently in the game i'm not sure how long they'll keep it in but if it's available when you're going for this challenge definitely use it as this map is great it's basically the equivalent of shipment shoot house nuke town that kind of map for vanguard and i'm sure it'll become like the weekend 24 7 mosh pit fan favorite like the previous maps so and the reason for this is because it's very small fast paced easy to get kills and it's fantastic for getting this challenge done fast in my game i went from just 15 close range kills to over 100 therefore obviously completing the challenge in just one game so you should be easily able to do the challenge in like two to three matches maximum you really shouldn't struggle too much with these tips so that, that at the moment you know if you're playing in das house 24 7 is in the game definitely use that playlist otherwise use free for all or some of those other modes next we're going to talk about is combat pacing so this is a setting i'm sure a lot of you will have started to heard about this so this setting determines how many players are in a match there's three options there's tactical which gives you the least number of players in the match there's assault which gives you a medium number of players and there's blitz which gives you a large number of players now assault and blitz are great as you get lots of enemies running around and therefore acting as lots of easy close range kills most of the maps are quite large so you want to avoid tactical as you won't see as many players and therefore it's difficult to get close to enemies obviously if you're playing dust house this doesn't matter too much because whatever combat pacing setting you're on they're all good but obviously assault or blitz are still best as you get more enemies that are potential kills whereas tactical it's gonna be a bit more quiet but if you are playing other modes like free for all then obviously blitz will be best most likely 
ultimately, you know, to get the max number of players on the map, but if you find it too hectic, you'd obviously switch to Assault. Like I said, if you're playing this house, it doesn't matter too much. In terms of which maps to be going for, obviously you want smaller maps or ones with lots of close encounter spaces. So this would be ones like Castle or Das House, as I keep mentioning, if that comes up in any other rotation, definitely use it. It's absolutely great. It's the best currently, I think. You've also got other ones like Decoy can be okay. Dome's really, really good, actually, as well. Probably the second best. And there's other good ones like Hotel Royale, Sub Pens, Tuscan, those kinds of maps. Those would be my top few in the game currently for getting this done but obviously if new maps comes out and they're small and fast paced definitely use those as well what about the class setup then let's move on to that now and then we'll move on to some final tips to help you get the challenge done even faster so for the class setup the attachments may vary from class to class hence if the specific attachment i suggest isn't available for your weapon try to use the most similar attachment and try to apply these general tips from this class to your own setup so for the attachments you generally want ones that increase your recoil control and accuracy although it's obviously not too important because you're not terribly far away from the enemy but it's still you know helpful you want ones that increase your movement speed your aim down sight speed your sprint to fire speed those kind of speeds and also increase your ammo capacity reload speed that kind of thing but obviously as i say you need to tailor the attachments to your specific weapon now i'm going to give you example attachments for two different weapons first an smg and then an assault rifle but obviously you know apply it to whatever weapon you're trying to get these point blank kills for so for the smg you know in my case i was using the mp40 and these are the example attachments i put on so i put on the recoil booster for the muzzle the krausnik 22101b barrel the slate reflector or something simple like that for the optic the krausnik 33m folding stock as well as the momentum efficiency, the quick kit, the grooved grip for the rear grip, the 7.62 Gorenko 32 round mags for the magazine, incendiary ammo which basically does persistent fire damage to chip away their health after the bullets hit them to basically get the kill faster but I'm sure people will probably hate you for using this but obviously it helps to get kills faster so use it if you wish. And then finally the SG98 compact underbarrel. Those are my example attachments for the SMG. For the assault rifle I was using the STG44 and I was using the following attachments. So first of all, I was using the recoil booster muzzle again. I was then using the VDD 320mm02B barrel, the slate reflector or something simple like that for the optic, the removed stock so you're more mobile. But obviously, bear in mind that the removed stock will actually have different effects depending on which weapon you're using it for. Then I was using the sleight of hand proficiency to reload faster, the fully loaded kit for max ammo, the fabric grip for the rear grip, the 7.62 Gorenko 30 round mags, as well as the incendiary ammo again. So it does persistent fire damage and people will probably hate you, but it might help getting kills. And finally the m3 ready grip for the underbarrel for the equipment i'd say for the tactical you either want to use a number 69 stun grenade or a stim shot but i suppose now that close range kills have been changed from point blank kills i think probably the stim shot may be more useful just for healing yeah but it's up to you then for the lethal don't use anything because it can take away from the number of kills you can get with your weapon and then for the field upgrade i'd put on something like dead silence which temporarily makes your footsteps silent and makes you undetectable by spy planes enemy intel and field mics but you could put on something that else like armor plates or anything like that now for the perks this is quite an important part of the class setup it used to be absolutely integral when there's point blank kills but now with these close range kills it's still quite important so the attachments i'd put on are the following so i put on ninja in perk one which allows you to move silently take reduced damage when falling and reduces the effectiveness of enemy tracker perks in perk two i'd put on tracker which allows enemies to leave behind a footprint trail and then in perk three i'd put on lightweight which increases your movement speed all of these ones basically make you lighter able to get up to the enemies easier without being given away and find out where enemies are by looking at their footprints on the floor. For the killstreaks, I'd put on Intel, Spy Plane, and Local Informants. These are all tactical killstreaks, and they're all great for finding where the enemies are, getting close to them, and getting kills, but obviously they don't take away from the number of kills you can get with your weapon. I'd say, so that's my class setup, no, but obviously feel free to mix and match the attachments, or, you know, perks, or anything else that I've suggested to your own playstyle. Do whatever you want, but that's my suggestion for those two weapons as examples. Finally, let's go on to some quick tips, and to get the challenge done even, even faster. Now, you often want to aim down sight as soon as you see an enemy that's fairly close to you or if going around a corner and expecting an enemy however if you are very close to an enemy and it may take too long to aim down sight and focus on the enemy you can always just hit fire at them just bear in mind that you can do that if you're close enough as this way you're more likely to kill them quickly as you're not having to aim down sight and waste time it'll be too slow to kill them but obviously this tip was more relevant when we needed to get point blank kills but for the most part enemies you 
will come across won't be close enough that you need to hit fire at them. So aiming down sight is probably still best, but obviously if you're going to die by aiming down sight, then just hit fire at them and hopefully you'll get the kill if you're close enough. Unless obviously, like I say, you're close enough to the enemy that you could almost touch them, at which point hit firing might be easier and quicker than aiming down sight as they might kill you faster. But it just, it, it, it depends on the situation. For the most part, it is an option, but it's not essential. I would generally say whatever map you're in, Death House or anything else, try to flank around the edges of the map and pick off one enemy at a time and getting in their spawns is great too just make sure that if there's lots of enemies are looking at you that you take cover when needed you can also linger around high flow areas like objective points like so for example a hard point or dumb flag if playing these modes rather than free for all you can also hide behind objects doorways walk along narrow corridors etc and wait for people to come past but again this is not as important now as we don't need point blanks you'll often find yourself running into a lot of enemies so just try and get yourself as close as you can and then aim down sight or hit fire like mad reload before entering gunfights this is a really important point as you're more likely to survive or get more kills so don't be reloading while you are in the middle of a fight and then we want to be as aggressive as possible and push up to the enemy as much as possible to get as close as you can and get as many kills and then you want to either try to stay as close to them while constantly firing or shoot them a bit to reduce their health and then get close enough to finish them off finally i think sliding up to enemies can also work great especially if you're chasing them from behind and they haven't noticed you know sliding will give you a temporary speed boost that allows you to quickly get close enough to them for the kill to count so that is how to get close range kills easily in Call of Duty Vanguard. Obviously, hopefully this video helped to get them a lot, lot easier. Once you've done this challenge, also feel free to check out any of my other guides for gold, diamond and atomic camos. So for example, headshots, long shots, bloodthirsties, close range kills, leveling up your weapons fast, any of those guides, feel free to check them out. Be sure to leave a like on the video if you found it useful so that other people can find the video too. And feel free to subscribe with your post notifications turned on by clicking the bell icon to stay up to date with all my latest Vanguard and Warzone videos. Like I say, feel free to check out anything else my channel if you need thanks for watching hope you found it useful and i'll see you guys all on the next one